Hello everyone and welcome back to another TSW2 video. Now I know yesterday we did a video talking about the new roadmap and the Harlem line that has just been placed on a roadmap. But today we have a new article talking about the DBBR612 DMU coming to the new Dresden to Chesnitz route. Before we get into the video, I'm going to ask all of you to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you would like to support me even further, consider becoming a channel member with the link in the description below. Let's get straight into it. So starting off, we see a picture of the DBBR612 DMU, also known as the Diesel Multiple Unit. It's going to be our first, I believe, our first DMU for TS, uh, not for TSW2, but for uh, the German routes in TSW2. And it's going to be our first tilting train in TSW2. So that is very exciting. Maybe we can get some like some other tilting trains. I believe the BR412 is a tilting train. One of the ICEs are um, we have the Pendolino, the Acela, stuff like that. Those are all tilting trains. So it'd be cool to see more of those in the game after this releases. But starting off, Tharthander Ramp, Dresden to Chesnitz is coming soon. We spoke to some of the developers to learn more about the route's iconic unit, the incredible DBBR612 DMU, TSW2's very first tilting train. So we have Tom and Mike. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I know um, he uh, works with Trains from Germany or he's the leader or something like that for Trains from Germany. You see him a lot on the forums. Um, here we go. Hi, I'm Tom, the lead vehicle artist for Transom World at Dovetail Games. I support a talented team of artists who built the rolling stock that we all enjoy driving and interacting with. My name is Mike Goltz, and I've been working on the Train Simulator and Train Sim World franchises for about 10 years now. Besides my personal DLC uh, work, I work as a contractor for DTG. Having a hand, having had a hand in making a lot of the DLC content happen in the past, both for Train Simulator and Train Sim World. I'm also the brains behind Train Sim Germany. Now I believe it was said that um, he helped a bit with the BR101 on the Hopstrecker Ryan Ruhr route. So that is pretty cool. That train is very well detailed. The sounds are cool. It does have some wheel slip issues, but I mean, I guess that's just because it's a very powerful um, locomotive. But what has been you or your team's involvement in creating the DBBR612? Tom says, I have been overseeing the great work being done by both our internal and external artists involved in producing the DBBR612 DMU in conjunction with ongoing communication and a few external collaborators who have been forthcoming with information and reference material, which, as always, makes a massive difference when it comes to producing rolling stock, and it's something we're incredibly, incredibly grateful for. And here we have, I believe this is like the just the model in production of the uh, 612. Pretty cool. One door. Um, I assume this is going to be like operating through the hills and stuff and on the new Chesnitz route. I'm very interested in seeing how many stations there are, if this will run like any S-Bahn or like regional services, what, the, what this would do, if it will appear on any other routes. Some of you who may um, be interested in the railways in Germany or know some more about it. In the comment section, tell me if this could like layer on to other routes like HMA, uh, Hopstock, Rhine Ruhr, Rhine Ruhr Austin, stuff like that. Because I'd love to see a train like this um, subbing in for others on other types of routes, you know, add a little bit of variety. I believe I heard someone say that it could be subbed into MSB, but I'm not completely sure about that. But moving on, Mike says, for the DBBR612 DMU, I have been doing the setup and audio work. Now, that's very promising because we know that uh, Trains from Germany, whenever they're involved in, like, any type of train production for TSW, they get the sound correct. You know, they was involved with the, D, uh, the DBBR423, I believe, and that train sounds just like its real-life counterpart. There are two types of the 423, and it sounds, I forgot, I think it's like the, the IGGBT inverter or something like that. It sounds just like one of the specific units of the 423, so that's cool. The 101 sounded very similar to its real-life counterpart, and I believe they did some work on the ICE3, so that's very good to know. This means I created a whole new train from scratch, including all of the simugraph work and the tilting train, uh, tilting system integra integration. If it's a visible component, that's my responsibility. My involvement in the audio work means recording brand new sounds from a real DB612, then editing it before implementing the best mix into the build. 
very good to know that they're getting the audio from a real DB612. I, I'm very interested in seeing how it sound. You know, obviously it's a, it's a diesel unit, so you wouldn't get the same type of traction motor sounds as another unit like the, like the M7 or something like that. But I'm very interested in seeing if it sounds like an actual diesel train, unlike the Class 150, which doesn't let out, like, the big roar of a diesel train, you know, that you would normally he hear when you're, like, powering it up, moving the throttle and stuff like that. Moving on, what's unique about this loco? The BR612 DMU gets to boast a few firsts for Transom World. Not only is it our first German DMU, but it is our also our first tilting train to boot. It also features some interesting touches, such as the family area, as we can see. It looks like a, um, if any of you have been, like, in a hospital and, like, the kids section, the pedi um, pediatrician says, section, it looks very similar to that, or, like, a library, like, the kids section of a library. That's what this reminds me of. Nice change from, like, the normal interiors we see on German trains, you know. Um, but this features child-friendly graphics from DB and is something we've not featured in any other previous German rolling stock before. I wonder if any other rolling stock have this type of, um, family area or if it's just the 612. Or if it's, like, like, uh, I guess exclusive to certain areas in Germany. I, I very much wonder that. It'd be cool to see more of these types of, like, areas on different trains in the game. The most obvious things are the tilting mechanism. we well, hold up. Okay, unique. We're talking about the uniqueness. Um, the most obvious things are the tilting mechanism, also known as tilting technology. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Tilting technology, or GST, which is track curve dependent car body control, as well as GNT, the new safety system that works together with the tilting. Very interesting. We're going to be playing around with a new safety system. Very interesting seeing how that works. The 612 can drive faster than the usual max speed, which normal German trains follow. Interesting. So it's going to be faster than like 140, 160 kilometers? Interesting. Um, by leaning into curves by up to 8 degrees, the centrifugal forces that passengers feel in the train are reduced. This allows the DB612 to drive up to 20 kilometers faster in curves than traditional non-tilting stock. Very, very interesting. You know, considering that it's a diesel train, I wouldn't expect it to gain, gain the same type of, type of acceleration and speed as, like, the electric multiple units. But this is making it seem like it's going to be going a bit faster than other trains we've had in the game, like the 422 or the 442 or stuff like that. Um, moving on to the next section, a tilting train that's very interesting. What new processes did you use, utilize when compared to creating a non-tilting train? This was actually a v brand new area for me to get my teeth into. I've never done anything that tilts before, neither in Train Simulator or Train Sim World. So first, I needed to do in-depth research and consider how I was going to recreate it before I started to work on the train. I read some technical descriptions of tilting systems as well as the manual for the DB612 itself, getting an idea of how it's driven and the physics behind different key values like speeds and forces. The general workflow for creating a train was not much different except for one aspect. All of the components that form the train above the bogies need to be able to tilt along with the train's body as well. Understandably, this caused some headaches, but in the end, I got it working well. The tilting animation is really smooth and eye-catching to watch. Very interesting that they had like an issue with that, considering that you can kind of already see the train tilting on curves in the game. I know that's because um, the tracks are kind of canted, so the train has that like kind of feel like if like if it's tilting on a curve um but it's very interesting i wonder because um some of you may know in the game um the way your head bobs in the cab it's actually the camera that's attached to your character that's moving and not the train itself i wonder if that's gonna like um make tsw a little more realistic with the trains actually bobbing around moving side to side and stuff because you don't really see that on the outside whereas in real life each individual car of the train will be bouncing all over the place, moving at higher speeds and all of that. So I'm very interested if we'll see more of that in the future with, I guess, the new technology that they have used to uh, tilt the train's body as well. But um, here we go. Why do some trains tilt and how do they safely stay on the tracks at speed? Whoa, this picture is very interesting. Excuse the um, horn in the background, but this picture is very interesting. You can see how the train is tilting. Um, I'm not a big fan of the front of this unit, 
Um, as some of you may know, the BR-423 is my favorite German train in the game and one of my favorite NTSW too. Um, but I'm just not a big fan of this train. I like the 423s look much better than this. But um, Tom says the tilting mechanism is used specifically to keep the train on the track whilst traversing curvature at high speeds without impacting comfort levels for the passengers on board. As the train approaches a curve at a high speed, the body tilts into the curve via a set of actuators mounted between the bogies and the body. The technology was introduced to facilitate higher running speeds on lines that weren't built with high speed running in mind. The tilting allows safe operation at a speed at high speed without requiring new lines to be built or, exist, or existing lines to be rebuilt, both of which can be cost inhibitive. Very interesting. Um, and Mike here says a good question. The honest answer would be Mother Nature. Generally, tracks in Germany are laid so that higher speed trains can easily run faster on them as allowed. So the speed profile for passenger trains is applied with passenger comfort in mind rather than, a, than the speed a train could derail in a curve. Of course, trains will derail when they're traveling too fast in curves. But each curve is calculated with a good speed threshold from the max allowed speed to the speed where it is likely to cause a derailment. These enforced maximum speeds can be ignored by tilting trains on routes fitted with the appropriate equipment. The tilting mechanism allows the train to travel above the conventional max speed whilst maintaining the comfort of the passengers. Of course, the bogies don't tilt and run as normal on the tracks. They do have corresponding forces applied to them when at higher speeds but the train is built for doing exactly this it will not derail if it, sp if it stays under the max speed for the tilting run even if it may look that way very interesting that the the actual wheels um and the bogies don't tilt and the actual train's car body does i'm very interested in seeing how that actually like looks when you're looking at the train from the front or from the side or whatever in actual like TSW with all the scenery applied and all of that. Very interested in how that'll look. What new gameplay can players look forward to with the DBBR 612 DMU? With the tilting, a whole new driving experience is there for the player to experience. When going into sharp curves with the high speeds, it looks like the train would tip over, but that's not gonna happen. It takes some getting used to. It's a bit different than having super elevated tracks. The additional 8 degrees of tilt is kind of scary the first time you see it. We're talking about nearly 14 degrees of tilting to the side. That doesn't sound like much but feels massive when you're in the cab and it makes driving lots of fun. Wait until you see it from the outside, it looks fantastic. Very interested in seeing the first like preview stream of this route. I'm very interested in the route as a whole, you know, I'm not I'm not familiar with this route. I don't know much about the area or whatever. I just know it comes from Dresden, it goes to Chesnitz. I don't know nothing about the route in between. I don't know nothing about the 612. I've driven the 143 before but not too much, so it's going to be a completely new route for me to learn and for me to get my hands on and all of that stuff. I'm not really um too knowledgeable about the German routes and stuff. I have made some videos on Dresden and some suggestions and stuff, but when when it comes down to like actually knowing about the different German routes and stuff, I'm not all that um, knowledgeable about that. Unless we're talking about like S-Bahn services in like the big cities like Hamburg, um, Munich, Berlin, stuff like that. Have you or your team come across any challenges while creating this loco? We're still not quite at a point where we can readily fly out and survey trains in other countries just yet, so that remains an ongoing challenge, and this was no exception. The curvature of the nose is deceptively straightforward looking at first glance, but required some back and forth to get it to a place we're happy with. As mentioned above, there were some new technical challenges to master. I put a good amount of time into the simulation of the three-stage fluid transmission, the hydraulic braking, both work in interesting ways due to DB612's other unique features and design. D612 DMU's hydraulic braking is totally different from any I had previously produced, including the G6 shunter that I had recently worked on for TSW2. Then the brake blending was challenging because the DB612 is doing some different things here to other trains. You can use the hydraulic braking with two different levers in a, in a cab, but it acts differently depending on which one you use. This was quite tricky as you can imagine. 
It reminds me a bit of the uh, 442, how you can use the dynamic brake that's um, on the combined traction brake controller to the left, and you can use the loco brake, which is the, um, the one to the right. Um, funny story, when I first got the rapid transit route, I didn't know how to stop the 442 um, Talent 2 correctly in the stations. I kept overrunning, and then I found out that I could use the other brake, and I kept using that brake to stop. But then later on down the line, I learned that you wasn't supposed to use that brake for normal operations, and I started to slowly learn how to use the dynamic combined traction brake controller. But it's still very difficult to operate that 442. I wonder if the 612 is going to be the same way. Um, of course, the tilting system overall was a real challenge that needed to be achieved visually and had to tilt smoothly. Lots of parameters are running around in the background to achieve that. I hope that's not going to mess with memory on consoles and stuff. Because we know in the background, when there's stuff running, it can, got, it can get kind of messy on consoles. As you may know from Hapstrack uh, Munich to Augsburg. Some other challenging aspects were the engine group start-stop control and a few of the multiple unit systems like the per unit battery and high voltage lines. What have you or your team enjoyed most about recreating this train? Simply put, I enjoy what you can do with TSW2 to create a train in nearly all aspects and as close to the real one as possible. Getting to drive it for a thousand kilometers before everyone else can do it. Yeah, I guess that's a pretty like a pretty cool thing for developers you know while you're making the train in the process of doing that you get to drive it before everyone else it's kind of like early access you know um my work on some of the systems is not always enjoyable in terms of having fun creating the stuff however the hard work and challenges it presents along the way mean i learn lots of new ways to improve and implement these complicated systems that gives me a good feeling for what my future work on tsw2 can hold I'm not sure what we're looking at here. Um, actually, I think I do know what we're looking at. This might be the um, the coupler in the front of the train. Yeah, um, looks like the a little buffer on the couplers or whatever. I'm guessing that's what it is. Let's try and zoom in. Yeah, it looks like that. Other than the fact we were able to introduce some new elements such as tilting with this release. We were also able to act on additional suggestions from collaborators, such as the coupler covers, so I'm assuming that's what this is, um, that serve to protect the couplers in winter when not in use in multiple set operation. I wonder how um, how many cars the 612 is, if it's just like a two car unit, four cars, um, how many units they operate in revenue service and stuff like that, if they run like two units coupled together, I'm very interested in seeing that. Um, but these are configured to be present on sets running in colder weather and removed in warmer weather, much as they are in the real world. Small details like this are great little touches to include. Glad they are including little details like that. But that was the end of this article. Very interesting to see them in the process of making the DBBR um, 612. Let's see what it says on the side of this. DB Regio, of course. Frankenstein Express. I really hope I pronounced that correctly. Very interesting, though. We can see the little family area right there. But that's very cool. Nice to see um, it in uh, production right here and all of that. Very interesting in seeing it release. Um, hopefully, you did enjoy this video. If you did, hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Consider becoming a channel member with a link in the description below. And I'll catch all of you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.